Look at that. It's it's summer. It's summer already. Blue skies, the sun's shining. It's close enough, isn't it? Surely. It's not winter anymore. Feels like. It does feel like. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. Does it matter? It, you know, does it matter? There's always a bit of sunshine inside you. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. So it's summer in our hearts. Exactly. It is summer in our hearts. And welcome to episode 13 of Modulate TV. It's uh, I'm Jules. We've got uh, Rob here. Hello. Hello. And um, we've got Matt. Hello. Hello. Uh, and it is, it's a, it's a bit of a sad anniversary in a lot of ways. It's a year since our last planned live performance. A year yesterday, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So March 18th last year, we'd have been in Sheldon's. Um, yep. I'm trying to dig out the lineup, actually. I can't remember who was on it. But, um, but yeah, that one, that one got cancelled. So It did. It did. So we've been virtual for a year. Virtual for a year. So, yeah, this is our 13th. And then um, I was just looking, the next, so the April one, the next one, will be our one-year anniversary of doing it online as well. So it'll be our, okay. it'll be our first birthday next month. Right. Oh, we'll, have a, we'll have a cake or something. That'll be lovely. Absolutely. But to celebrate tonight, uh, Rob and Matt, we've got a an, uh, an astonishing lineup of music. I have to say, I know, and I probably say this each time, but this is genuinely, I think, the best lineup we've had so far it's it's a, a, a wonderful array of music that we've got on tonight definitely the most banging i think yeah i mean yeah i mean i like a bit of i like a bit of dance music so that that is right up my alley yeah there's not a huge amount of ambience tonight is there so um no. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair and um yeah what, what we finish with but yeah we've got um all over the globe again there's also got matthew db um from toronto um uh ross alexander who um somewhere somewhere Cheshire way um Mr Julian from Chester our, our favorite we've got Probby another UK based artist and then we got Itai from New York and Tune Girl is back um and Tune Girl's based over in Germany so um yeah another globe trotting show and um yeah yeah people just get keep getting better and better I think the community as a whole um the, 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 the level of performance just continues to blow us all away, I think. Um, oh, no doubt about it. And particularly some of the pieces tonight, which are just truly astonishing. And one in particular, I'm not going to mention which one it is yet, which you said was just a jam. And you told me afterwards it was a jam. Said, no way, that's just a jam. That's, you know, somebody must have spent hours preparing that, days preparing it. But no, it was just a jam. Well, we'll tell you which one it is when it comes up. But what are we kicking off with tonight then? So, um, kicking off, um, we've got um, Matthew DB, um, so yeah, he's our he's our first performance. So yeah, how can we have a listen to that and then a bit of a bit of a chat afterwards? Indeed, have a listen, have a look, see what gear you can spot. The one thing that did absolutely terrify me about the whole of this, there wasn't a screen in sight, uh, which would uh, drive a shiver down my spine. <laughs> but uh, seems to have been able to produce a magnificent piece of music without a screen anyway. So why don't we kick it on then? So uh, what's the name of the song by Matthew DB, Rob? Um, so he's got four tracks. I'm glad you've asked me to read these out. So uh, they're all <laughs> named after particles. So he's got anti-neutrino, um, W boson, lepton resonance, and positron outlook. So it's a, it's a set based around those four tracks. Well, there we go. Let's have a listen. Here we go. Thank you. 
Well, that was quite a piece of music, wasn't it? Um, there was a lovely pad came in about eight minutes in in that as well, which was really quite dreamy. Yeah, really amazing. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what was producing that. I, I was mentioning the other day, it's like he's built his own modular synth, but out of lots of mini synths. Um, right. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what is producing what, but, um, but a brilliant performance to integrate all those... Um, I say all the all those mini synths together. Yeah, I, I actually wrote that down. It's like a Euro rack if you didn't buy a case and you just had all the individual little bits. Um, but amazing to hear all of that gear working so seamlessly together. Yeah. Um, well, that's what, I would just interesting you say that, Matt, because I was trying to work out, and you might have spotted it because you know gear better than I do. What was actually sequencing all that? Would it be the OPZ? Oh, it could be, yeah. yeah. I think the OPZ is probably the main sequence from it. Um, I guess I some of... of the effects have probably got their own internal sequences. But there must be a master somewhere, mustn't there, controlling everything? Yeah, the, the OPZ is the master thing. That's where the beats were coming from. Um, and then he's got the ba- he's got some of the Bastel stuff, so I think they're... And he actually got the Bastel stuff making noises which didn't just squelch and scream like the ones that we had, Rob. <laughs> no. I think he's, uh, but he's got some of the slightly more sophisticated Bastel stuff. But I see the micro granny in there. Yeah, yeah, it's a lovely little piece of kit, that. Oh, yeah, lovely. No no big boy school or cream buns samples in it. No, that, that was, yeah, that was our cream buns song, that was, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. Cream, cream buns. Was. Yeah. Um, but I love the um, I love the kind of house. It's kind of reminded me of um, clubbing in Sheffield in the in the late 90s. And um, I was messaged him and, and we were talking about influences and it was, Quite quite similar, I think. Kind of, although he's in Toronto, both have kind of similar similar influences in terms of some of that house and house and disco flavored techno, as he describes it. But um, that it certainly comes across in the in performance, doesn't it? It does, and a couple of cheeky pocket operators popped in the side there as well. Yeah, a couple of pocket operators. I think he had the Korg Mutect, didn't he? The, 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 the little Korg one that you build yourself. Um, yeah. Yeah, and just amazing with all that, all those little individual synths, it just sounded, the mix sounded so tight and punchy, Mm. like there's no opportunity for any post-production on that kind of setup, it's kind of, you have to do it all on the machines um, for it to sound as tight and cohesive as it did and just sound like you're just playing through four tracks. Super impressive, and I think you you nailed it really, quite fun with that kind of, some of those pieces of gear, it's a little more noisy or droney in terms of the mm. music that comes out but um yeah it's just lovely lovely slightly wonky house music which um, it was yeah, right up my street that it was a superb piece of music thank you very much indeed matthew db would love to hear a little bit more of uh, of that sort of stuff so where can if we wanted to hear more rob where where can we find more of that um uh, i think youtube his youtube channel is 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 the best place he said so right. um yeah if you search for matthew um with one t db on YouTube, we'll put the link um, in the description. But yeah, head over there. Dig it out, have a listen, uh, and do support where you can. So coming up next, we've got a uh, well, he's he's a good friend of the, I wasn't say friend of the family then, but you know what I mean. Um, it's uh, it's Ross Alexander, who's uh, we've we've done stuff with before, and he's also done stuff on the Only Human stuff before as well. Um, and he's got a lovely piece of gear sat right in the middle of all this as well. Yeah. If you know how to use it. Yeah, nice big MPC. Indeed. MPCX right in the middle there, yeah. which is a glorious piece of kit. But um, as as we know, MPC stuff can be a little confusing. Uh, but Ross seems to know his way around it pretty well. So what's the what's this called uh, song called? Uh, this song is called Atomic Four. Okay, tell you what, should we have a listen? Then we'll come back out and have a chat. Yeah, that's good. Here we go.
Wow, that was Ross Alexander and Atomic 4. Um, we were just chatting whilst uh, that song was playing then and just saying, if anybody knows their array around an MPCX, it's Ross Alexander. Um, and you were saying, Rob, it's like watching somebody DJ the way he's able to manipulate that piece of machinery. Yeah, I saw him. He did. Um, he played for Andy's and the Human Night. Um, and I think, he had, I think he had another gig, so he was on at the start, um, which was unfair for any of us having to follow him because he set the bar really high. <laughs> um, he, I think he, I think he just performed with that and a digitone, um, and it was just incredible. It, it, it was just like watching or hearing a DJ set, but he just doing it all on the MPC one. Um, and yeah, just, but he's actually creating the music rather than mixing CDs together or whatever. He's he's actually creating that as well. He's well. basically, he's basically just, remixing his stuff live, which, yeah, I, I mean, it's what the gear is designed for, but um, but his fluency and um, his kind of command of everything that box is mm. capable of doing was, was seriously impressive. Um, yeah, as was the song. As I've got to say, that was an amazing piece of music as well, a classic bit of dance music. Yeah, I think we play some stuff on the radio show, Matt, and that was more techno oriented. This is a bit more kind of house. Yeah. Um, a bit more kind of house music. And um, yeah, I, I think either house or techno, he's, he knows his stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, he knows his potatoes. How, how did you find him, Matt? Um, I, I loved it. I think I, I just wrote a totally joyous acid excursion, was my note on that one. It was just like <laughs> pure good vibes. Let's all go out and dance in the sunshine. Um, it was just, I love some music. It's just full of joy and you can just mm. kind of feel it come through and yeah, you can't help but bounce around in your seat or uh, dance around your kitchen, wherever you happen to be when you, you're listening to that. It's, it's a good time, that one. I find it wasn't quite as hard as a lot of his previous music that I've listened to. And I like, mm -hmm. a, I like a bit of good bit of hard dance music as well, but it just had, did have a lighter tone and lighter touch to this that did give it a slightly more joyous feel a less dark feel than you you quite often get from ross's stuff yeah like uh, like ross said his, his last ep uh, cloudburst had just some really like great acid stuff some really nice like old school platypus records kind of vibes and some break stuff but it it was harder edge it was a lot mm. kind of punchier and a lot more produced but yeah 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 if, if you like this definitely check out that ep Whatever he does, um, what I'm most struck with Ross's music is the energy he, he kind of brings with it. It's house music or techno. It's just um, the energy to his tracks is really impressive. Production yeah. is always top notch, but he just yeah, you can you can always imagine yourself dancing to to Ross's music. This, mm -hmm. this is a summer tune for me. Open air, so yeah. Uh, get this on. Nice bottle of beer in your hand, grieving away. Exactly. Be happy with that. If you fancy a bit of grooving this summer, then where can we find more of Ross's stuff? Is it is Bandcamp the best place again? Or yeah, so he's got his own he's got his own label, Forte Techno, um, which is on Bandcamp, and then he's got his personal Bandcamp as well. So is that Forte as in F O R T E Techno? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, and then just Ross Alexander uh, on Bandcamp. But he's also he's also doing some um, some DJing on a radio station called Arp Radio. Right. Um, but again, we'll put the link to that, rpradio.com, so um, you can catch them on there as well. Okay, that was brilliant. So, Ross Alexander, thank you very much indeed. That was, uh, that was a beautiful song. That was Atomic Four, if you want to go and look it up on Bandcamp or wherever. Um, coming up now, we've got, uh, it's Dr. Boom in the room. It's Dave Julian. Absolutely. With, uh, with Be Selective. Um, our man's on a roll, isn't he, Mr. Julian? <laughs> God, isn't he just... Cracky, this, this is just, this is really, really dancey for Dave as well. I tell you what, let's have a listen, why don't we? And then we'll come back out of this and have a chat about it. But this is uh, the amazing Dave Julian uh, with Be Selective. Thank you. 
That was Dave Julian, be selective. Um, it's nothing, oh, nothing. I t- I'm a bit lost for words, to be quite honest, after listening to that. I love Dave's stuff anyway. I'm a bit of a bit of a Dave fan, but um, that's not me bandy, that one. Yeah, it's a proper banger, isn't it? I think that's the way I'd describe that one. Um, we've, had the, uh, we've had the funk yep. from Dave on a couple of his tracks, but uh, this is a return to his, um, I, I guess, his more techno-orientated... Uh, Orientated tunes. Um, I, I, I just first time I heard this, I was just like, whoa! This is. I mean, deserves deserves a release. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it um, would not sound out of place on the radio at a festival. No, absolutely. You can think of many big name artists that if they drop this in a set, you wouldn't blink, would you? It, it's it's no. that good. It, it genuinely is, and it's like, a, yeah, it's like if you brought out a CD of stuff, this would be your. I always find it's number three tracks always usually the best one on a CD. This would be my number three track on a CD. It's just really such a fantastic piece of music and lasers. So he had visual lasers and he had laser sounds at the beginning as well. It was all going on. Yeah, I I love the sound of the the nicks on this one, mm. um, the Dreadbox nicks that actually like and having the Acid Lab through three emulation. But that that is sitting there underpinning it, and it's really the Nicks that's the star of the show, and yeah, the way that he manipulates that and that kind of five step pattern repeating over the four four, yeah, it just creates such a kind of a primal feeling of tension, um, the the whole track, and then the, those kind of choir patches, like pure old school kind of techno sounds, um, and yeah, it's I think we were saying you know you can hear his influences with Dave's music, you can almost kind of hear the breeding of the sound. Yeah. Um, there's an authenticity to it. And it, it, it just, it, it le- it's left two of us speechless now. So, yeah. <laughs> what, what can you say? Yeah. But it is, so good. it is quite a technically complicated piece of music as well, isn't it? I mean, it's a very cleverly put together. I, I wrote down there, he, he really does know how to put a tune together, but it, it, it isn't a simple tune to put together that either. As you said, he's got, you know, with the way he's put that five step sequence in there for the bass line and, and all the rest of it. It's, it's a complex piece of music that he's put together there. It's complex, but it sounds so clean yeah, and simple exactly. when you listen to it. And that, yeah. that, that's, that's Dave's utter genius. His programming is, uh, efficiency is the wrong word, but um, I mean, there's, nothing, there's nothing wasted. There's no kind of fat in, in no. Dave's tunes. There's nothing unnecessary. It's just, he, he yeah. gets his programming, his, his drum programming is just always so spot on. It's just yeah. so clean, but it's got such a kind of funky groove to his drum programming. Um, and, and that's the alpha bass in this again. I, I love, love that drum machine, yeah. like Joe Mock's alpha bass. It always, always just sounds so good. I'm incredibly envious of, of uh, most of Dave's drum machines. Uh, mainly because they're all way too expensive for me to uh, <laughs> ever be able to. <laughs> but also, nobody else can actually make them sound like Dave the makes them sound anyway. Way. No, well, probably not. No, no. He's, he's, yeah, so his ability to his ability to program those machines is 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 second to none, really. Um, yeah, yeah, love it. It's just just a, a brilliant, brilliant piece of music. So again, yeah. Dave's stuff then. So where's the best place for for looking out for Dave? Because he does he do more SoundCloud. So his older stuff's on SoundCloud. Um, he has started to um, he has started to put some stuff on Bandcamp as well. Um, this track's an exclusive for us, so right. I don't think he's. And this is a live version of it, so um, I don't think he's decided yet what he's going to do with the um, with the studio version of this as yet. Yeah, I have heard the full mastered version of it, and yeah, it it doesn't. Oh, have you? Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's a it's a level up, but again, just the the sound that Dave's able to get straight out of the boxes. Like, there's no computer post production mm. mastering anything on on this. It's it's just done with his ears and uh, you know a skillful musical brain that he has. Um, yeah, properly Blimey. good, and yeah, I, I believe that this is coming out at some point as part of an EP. So uh, yeah, look out for that. Jeepers, well, that'll be, that'll be something genuinely to look forward to. So Dave Julian, um, that was called, hang on a minute, what was the name again? I've scrolled down too far. Be selective. Um, but that was superb, Dave. Thank you very much indeed for that, as always. Right, so coming up next, we've got, now am I going to pronounce this correctly, Rob? Is it Proby or Proby? Proby. 
It's probably, yeah, Paul Williams, probably. but probably, yeah. So um, he was with us, it was before Christmas. I can't remember now. I think it was the first show of the year. Might have been, yeah, it probably was the first show of the year. So, um, and he enjoyed himself so much, he, he kind of did this and thought of us first and said, I've done another patch of love. Would you like to, would you like to preview it on your show as an exclusive? I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> obviously. So why not? Yes. So we've got Towards Twilight. This is called. Okay. Well, let's have a listen. This is probably Towards Twilight.
that was probably towards twilight what a lovely piece of music that was yep superb and great um i I think when when it started remember the last jam that he had for us was the pure like heavenly chill out stuff and this one starts so dark you think "Uh oh god we're in for it now and then it immediately releases into just yeah gorgeous ethereal (laughs) module of magic well it does majestically sweeping i wrote down for that i couldn't think of any other way to kind of describe it really it was just um beautiful yeah, I I love the the little leads that I think are or delay lines that are coming out of the mimeophone, and right. he sort of tweaks it, and there's those two little kind of pulsy leads that are just dancing around. Um, just yeah, another track that you can feel the joy. I think the the, the thing with the mimeophone, it's a, it's um, it's a delay, but you can almost play it. Um, right, it, like a lot of the make noise stuff, it's. Um, you can set it so it's kind of a rhythmic delay or it's timed or, 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 or whatever, but um, it comes alive when you kind of almost uh, play with the sound. It encourages you to do that. Um, what was that um, glorious looking little box in the bottom left hand corner with all the lights on it? It looked like, I, I, I don't know what it does, it looked like a sequencer of some sort, but it had but- lots of buttons and lights on it, which I liked. So it's the eloquence. So he talked to us about that it didn't was. He, when he did the. Um, the radio show that's that's his, that's the thing that holds everything together so it's um right i think it i think it's got eight outputs on it so it's melody and beats so it does um yeah it's basically an eight eight channel sequencer but yes yeah, so that, that that's basically underpinning all the sequencing for the patch was that even sequencing the shaver that he'd sampled in there there's a sampled shaver in there i know he sampled a shaver into the arbor so now the arbor is i mean you can sequence it but um no, he's, he's got um, he's got an LFO going into the the scan, so the, the the little the little light waveform you can see moving backwards and forwards. That that's been controlled by an LFO. So um, yeah, yeah, and so it, would, it just felt like a big sweeping majestic piece of music that kind of washed over you, uh, and you can sort of just let yourself just get dripping wet in its beauty. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm rambling. His album's like that though. He's he's he did. Um, he released an album in January around the time he did our show called Soul and Flow. Right. So, um, if you like the patches he's done on here, then the album's well worth listening to because it's just an album of, of, of similar similar stuff. So, if you wanted to listen to more, probably where can we find more? Uh, so Bandcamp is again the best place to go. Okay. That's where he's that's where his album is. So, well, it was a yeah. superb song, um, thoroughly enjoyable. And again, go and go and search out more if you want to hear more of Probby. Um, coming up next, we've got something oh, cracky, really quite special. Really, I don't want to preempt this too much, but um, whew, uh, this is Itai. Have I pronounced that correctly? Itai. Itai. I think Itai. Itai. Probably pronounced okay. it. Yeah, it's Itai. It's our, um, he's kind of made modular synthesis rock and roll, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, um, I'm not sure how he's done it. Um, I'm insanely jealous, um, <laughs> but <laughs> but there we are. Um, well, uh, and there's two songs here, Rob, as well, isn't there? Yes, he's done two. So um, he's got two tracks on here. So one is called Chasing Ghosts, um, and the other one is called Give Me Candy. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we have a listen? And um, just whilst you're watching this and listening to this amazing performance, just think, remember, you saw it here first when this guy is like a megastar. This is, this is just an astonishing piece of music. So this is Itai.
that was Etai. Um, again, I've been lost for word once tonight, um, and I'm a little bit lost for words for a second time. That was just an astonishing performance. I mean, the the skill of the guy around those pieces of equipment is singing. I, I, I wrote down, and I might be wrong here, but Sisters of Mercy stroke Radiohead. It's quite interesting the modular scene. There's quite a few folk I've got to know whose whose background is um, alternative sort of indie rock music. Um, so that would have been what, what people did and were in bands or that, that was the music they loved and the people got into synthesizers and um, and that's our background. But Itai kind of fuses the two together. So these two tracks yeah. tonight, I mean, there is a kind of a... Um, yeah, there's an alternative feel, isn't there? I think part of that's his voice because he does have a, like I say, mm. his, his voice is he, he kind of got a bit of a Tom York style to it. Um, yeah, but he, he, performance-wise, it's he, he, just incredible. It looks amazing, um, sounds amazing. Yeah, it, and again, that was modular again. As you were saying, whilst we were actually listening to it, you know, that's making modular cool. I mean. Who'd have thought that could happen? <laughs> but, it was, but it is. <laughs> yeah, well, he's he's he writes rock and roll songs with it. Um, yeah. And he, what, what's really clever about what he does? So he's got um, so there's a sequence that's really popular in Europe at the moment. It's called the Nerd Sec. You can program songs into it, so the structure's there, but you can improvise around it. So um, you kind of know what the parts are going to sound like. It's a little like Ableton clip launching or clip launching on the force yeah. or something like that. So what Etai does, he's got, he's got these songs that he's built in the nerd sec, but then he, he marries that with the flexibility of the modular and he might, he might use different voices for the different parts depending on how he wants something to sound on a particular day. So this, the song structure is there. But you can make it sound different because you'll use a different mm. oscillator or a different effect or um, yeah, just 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 kind of put different different sounds into it. The sequencing there, but all of the the sounds sounds mm. so raw and live. There is just that excitement of live music about it. While it feels like the bits that need to be controlled are controlled, but there's yeah. enough kind of live element it's it, i kind of think it, it's like watching somebody djing with vinyl where you know that mm. even though the songs have been produced there's still it's a human being pressing down on a bit of plastic that you know anything could happen at any moment yeah. he could flip the wrong switch and something could go wildly mm. out or some of the bits where he was just wailing on the knobs like <laughs> you can hear what he's doing you can see it it's kind of a physical performance um I, I kind of wrote down it's it's like watching someone riding a tiger. <laughs> they're they're, <laughs> they're, yeah, yeah. they're doing a great job, but you just look at it and go, man, that could go wrong at any moment there. <laughs> and there's a great moment again where uh, I think he hits the smoke machine, and there's just something really mm. funny about watching somebody playing with the modular as loads of smoke is rising up from it. He was like, oh, oh it's not. It's, something's gone pop. It's gonna break. But yeah, I think you're spot on there though. That the the this the I mean, the sequencer takes care of the stuff that allows him to perform and he, he is a performer first and foremost you can see that i think in his um i mean i don't know if you remember the track he did for us before christmas that everything changed track um which was just utterly astonishing again um, and if you go on his youtube channel um talking about the other influences he's covered the pixies he's covered mazzy star i think he's covered a new order tune so he's as well as writing his own original kind of rock songs on the module, he's covered um, covered some incredible stuff. So, I mean, his cover of Where Is My Mind by the Pixies is just utterly astonishing. It is so, so good. It's amazing, isn't um, it? It is amazing. So is YouTube YouTube the best place to go and find more stuff? Um, so he's got a load of stuff on YouTube. It is, it is well worth going on for the original stuff and yeah. the covers. Um the, the stuff he did for John O's Modular World show where he does it in the woods with the live drummer. Oh, that yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Just ridiculously yeah. good. Um, yeah. And if you want to support him, he's, um, if you go to his band camp, his albums are on there. Um, he does, yeah, I think he's got some merchandise on there. He does his own t shirts and that kind of thing. Um, but, um, but yeah, band camp, if you want to directly support him. But um, do check out his YouTube channel. 
Um, Just in case anybody's listening rather than watching, uh, this, the spelling of Itai is, if I get this right, triple I, T-A, triple I. That's right, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. So if you want to look it up, that's how you find it. So Itai, thank you very much indeed. That was an amazing, genuinely beautiful piece of music. Um, last song, can you believe that? Where's that time gone? I know. What a song you've picked for the last one here, boys. This is a little bit special, though. So, come on, what have we got coming up? We've got Tune Girl. So, Tune Girl was on was it episode two or episode three. Matt mm. remembers these things better than me, but it was way back at the start of doing this. We we, we had Tune Girl. Um, yeah. So, yeah, stayed in touch, asked if she wanted doing something again, and um, she sent us this. This. This, I mean, we mentioned right at the top of the show that uh, we had one piece tonight which was just purely a jam, and this is that piece. You won't believe it when you listen and watch this, um, because this is just such an amazing piece of music. Why don't we, t- why don't we chuck it on? We'll have a chat afterwards. Uh, what's the name of the song, Rob? This is Tune Girl, but it is... There isn't a name. It is literally just a jam. She just... It's the Tune Girl jam. It's the Tune Girl jam, go. yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go.
Okay, that was Tune Girl with a, believe it or not, random jam. That was just, do you know what? We could hardly shut Matt up during what listening to that because he was just going on about how amazing it was. And come on, Matt. And I said, stop talking. You need to say this afterwards. It's, yeah. it, it's just such a wonderful free performance. The, it, you just, you feel like you've just walked into her house and she's there happily in the zone jamming. And, you know, you get the impression that you, we've, joined her for a section of a, a jam that could have gone on for another hour or two and it, it's just fantastic to see somebody so totally in the zone and in one with the equipment just absolutely jamming out on it well that's it and again that's somebody knowing their equipment inside out and you know that kind of shows in the relaxed performance then you know you and your mechanics are as one you are all, all of a sudden turned into one sort of ecosystem to be able to produce stuff like this which is quite amazing really and it, and it just wasn't what i expected to hear from a modular piece of kit no she's got i, mean, I think she's got techno in her bones i mean i think she, she's somebody yeah. who clearly loves techno music understands it the power of the kick drums the effects she yeah. uses the way she uses reverb the way she uses delay the way she uses chords, she's just got such an amazing understanding of the genre of music. Yeah. And what's really interesting about her setup, she's got some flashy modules in there, but there's an awful lot of really simple modules as well that don't cost yeah. a fortune, but just do just do a job. Um, and she, she's, you know, I've watched her, I watch what she buys and what she puts in there, and, and she just, she's just amazing at, at just getting the right tools for her trade. Um, and her trade is just making banging, banging techno music. I mean, you just, <laughs> <laughs> I like you might, I mean, techno is repetitive, and 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 it, but if you listen to an amazing techno mix, it is repetitive, and and it, and it's got that driving BPM, but it's those subtle variations and little changes and little mm. additions here and there that bring it to life. And she just sent us ten minutes of that at its very best. It's, it's just, it's just, I mean, it's it's incredible. Um, there's a there's a really nice bass line that starts the whole thing off at the beginning and it goes I can't remember it goes a couple of minutes in and I kept thinking oh she's gonna that's gonna be a, there's gonna be a kick dropping in and here any minute and then all of a sudden it does and the whole thing just like suddenly trundles into motion uh, it was just a, a lovely moment because I knew it was gonna come and I just wasn't sure when it was gonna happen and the way she did it was beautiful it just like rolled all over you it was just superb I'd love 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 to 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 see someone like Tune Girl at Nexus yeah and 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 see her. Uh, Perform where she's got an interaction with a with a crowd because I mean we see I've seen live acts at, at, at Nexus and they've been they've been they've been brilliant. I mean um, they were, they were good, but it was it was, there were sets of music yeah, that were exactly. that, that, that were kind of clearly to a larger or less extent pre prepared. I'd love to see her improvise like this, but with the yeah. crowds. Yeah, so reacting to the audience, yeah. Well, like you said, when that kick drum comes in, I mean, the place, that little room at yeah. Nexus would just go off, wouldn't it? it, it yeah. It, it, yeah. People climbing the walls for that. And, and I'd just love to see yeah. her with that kind of energy coming back from an audience too. Um, be amazing. It would, and it was an amazing piece of music. So thank you very much indeed, Tune Girl, for that. So if we want to listen to more Tune Girl stuff, where do we, uh, where do we, where do we wander off to on the internet? Um, Instagram's probably the best place. She's right. always posting stuff on there. She has got some stuff on YouTube. I, I don't know how to date. She keeps that. She's she's quite old school. I mean, she shares it on she shares it on Instagram. Um, I don't know. Head over to Germany when lockdown finishes and find her playing live somewhere. We need, need to get onto Jim at Nexus and like uh, get her to fly her over. <laughs> yeah, let's get let's get Jim on the case. Go on, on Jim. Yeah. But that was a superb way to round the night off. And, and what a night it's been. Should, I'll stick on the top of the Pops music. Do you want, so one of you going to give us a quick rundown of what we've actually had tonight and who's been playing and who's put all the effort into these wonderful performances? So, yeah, so we've had kicked off with Matthew DB um, um, all, the, all the way from Toronto um, with his, his wonky, wonky house with all these little boxes. The MPC master, Mr. Ross Alexander, with his fabulous... Fabulous house tune was, was was second. DJ, Mr. Julian. Um, Dr. Boom in the room. Bringing us the boom again. No funk in this one. Just proper full-on boom from our, uh, from our techno. Lasers. Lasers, everything. Um, Father, we probably with a, a, another lovely patch from him. Probably our only sort of chilled in of the evening yeah. was, that, was that patch from Proppy. And we had Itai with couple of amazing 
amazing tunes from his back catalogue. Um, just yeah, it's so good. The guy deserves to be a to be a star. Yeah. Maybe he will be. Maybe he'll be the first breakthrough modular rock and roll star. Who knows? Um, never know. And then finally, Tune Girl. Dropping in a big beat to end it all off. Just a bit of fantastic techno to finish the evening. Um, gets all dancing around our living rooms. Indeed. And what an evening it was. I've thoroughly enjoyed that. And I'm sure everybody else out there has uh, thoroughly enjoyed all the music. Rob, if anybody wants to get in touch and uh, and just either chat about the stuff that they've listened to tonight or maybe talk about some music they'd like to push out, how do they get in touch? Yeah, so um, you can do it on here on YouTube. Just comment. Um, get, always check the messages on here. Um, we've got our um, Instagram page, so on there is Modulate. So um, to be fair, that's probably how most people get in touch is through through Instagram um, or on Facebook Messenger as well. You can, you can reach us on there. So brilliant across, across most of the platforms. Well, yes, yeah, so it's been a pleasure, boys. Always a pleasure. Lovely chatting to you. Matt, all the way from sunny Carnarvon? Pennegroyce. Yeah, it's close enough, isn't it? Same sort of place, <laughs> there or thereabouts. Uh, Rob from sunny old Colwyn, and I'm in diving from sunny Rose on sea So it's a big goodbye from North Wales. But uh, So it, when's the next show, though, Rob? So when will we be broadcasting once again? Uh, so the next one will be um, 18th of April, and that will be our one-year anniversary show. So, And I'm uh, sure that'll be a special... Well, it, it will, yeah. So I'm hoping um, we'll have some, some tunes from the residents. So, yeah, those that, I guess, started it when we when we first did our first show when we're all stumbling around what on earth, wondering what on earth we were going to do in lockdown to, to keep being creative. Um, yeah, and I've invited a few, a few friends of the show back who've, who've kind of been part of what we've developed over the, over the past year. Um, and hopefully, hopefully... Special guest to have a to have a, to have a chat about a uh, chat about what we've been up to. So um, yeah, watch this space. But um, yeah, should be should be a great show to celebrate a year of doing this online. Brilliant stuff. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, everybody, stay safe out there. But most of all, be kind and make music. <laughs>